All right. So as Annie said, we have a lot of time uh, for the session. We're not going to fill the, the whole time. So there will be some, some time for discussion after. So if you get lost at any point, just shout. And I'm happy to take it more slowly uh, yeah, at any point. Or if you have any question, or feel free to interrupt. So I'm going to talk um, about the, the state of the DRT routing table. And so yeah, spoiler alert, um, the, the, the health uh, of the DHT is quite good. So first, um, yeah, what is the CADMLIA DHT routing table? So CADMLIA is a DHT, which is um, just an overlay network, uh, decentralized. And in an overlay network, you need to have um, yeah, some, some peers. So you need to know the contact of some other peers. Otherwise, you wouldn't be part of the network. And so that's the peers. Um, so these peers are in uh, your routing table. And so that's uh, the routing table in the DHT in general. And then Kademia uh, has a specific uh, yeah, implementation of the routing table. So it keep peer, peers in the K bucket and sort them by peer ID, uh, sort the peer ID by XOR distance. Um, and each bucket is, is capped at 20. So, um, gonna just walk through an example. So what we have here is the Kademlia key space. So it's so in Kademli, so in IPFS uh, we 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 have a 256 bit key space here just for the sake of space. Um, uh, I did a, a, a four bit uh, key space. Um, and also in IPFS uh, the tree is not balanced, meaning that there are a lot of nodes that don't exist. And so basically, if we take, so the peer IDs are mapped to uh, binary identities, which would be like this. And so if we take a reference node and try to fill up its bucket to see what it's like, so we'll uh, take the nodes with the common prefix of length L in bucket L. So what do I mean by this? So for instance, the bucket that has the same three um, digit will be in the in the bucket three, then the bucket two uh, would could be able to fit those peers, bucket one here and the bucket zero here because that's the prefix length they share. So um, eventually we're gonna end up with a routing table looking like this. So we'll have the the low ID buckets um, that are uh, full or capped at twenty. And the, the, then we have, so an exponential growth from the higher ID bucket, so bucket four, three, two, to bucket zero. But in practice, it's gonna be uh, capped at 20 at most per, uh, per bucket. So that's basically how the routing table works. Um, now, um, so in Kademlia, we have a replacement policy, which means that uh, if there is, so, when we interact with the network, we hear about other peers and we just categorize them. Okay, you would belong to bucket X. And if the bucket is not full, we just add the peer to the bucket. In the case the bucket is full, so as described in the Academia paper, we should uh, probe, so ping all of the peers that are in this bucket. And if one doesn't answer, we just replace it uh, by the new one. And the Kubo implementation, so it means that uh, for the buckets, so as we have a lot of churn in IPFS for the buckets that don't have a lot of peers, like bucket four, if the peers goes offline, there will never be uh, better candidates in this bucket uh, because, yeah, just the, the, the distribution is uh, very unlikely that there are other peers. So there's going to be a stale entry forever. So what Kubo is doing is that periodically, I don't know, maybe every 10 minutes or so, it will probe all of the peers in all of the bucket and just evict them if they fail to answer so that there is space to uh, yeah, add some new peers um, in those buckets. Um, <clears throat> now, so we did some measurements and so that's kind of the description of the data. So we used the Nemula crawler built by Dennis um, to crawl all of the peers in the network. So the, the Nebula crawler gives us a snapshot in time of all of the peers that were online or offline and the state of the routing tables. So 
all of the peers that are in every peer's routing table. Um, and so the data we measure from is we took 28 crawls over one week. Um, and it was in April this year. So uh, the, the methodology for most of the measurement is, uh, so we get the global snapshot of the network from Nebula. Then we are able with the list of peer that is the routing table of um, all of the peers, we are able to um, reconstruct the K bucket just by computing the XOR distance between one peer identity and the identity of all of the peers in those buckets. And um, from the global snapshot, so we know all of the peers that are connected in the IPFS network, and we can compute the X closest peers to any point to see, um, for instance, if some peers would belong in a bucket, but that the node is actually ignoring or missing because they didn't hear of, so that we can compute the performance. So if the buckets are as full as they should be. And yeah, so something a bit strange about Kademlia and this XOR distance is that the XOR distance is nonlinear. So I, I, I won't expand, I will not expand too much on this. I'm happy to discuss this in more details, but this is not really necessary for, for the, this experiment. Um, just mean we had to implement that kind of stuff to uh, be able to compute efficiently the XOR distances. <clears throat> But yeah, it's a tricky topic and I'm happy to talk more about it uh, if you want to chat. Um, <clears throat> so now uh, to the results. So um, we just, um, so yeah, basically in each of the K bucket of all of the peers, uh, we just uh, wanted to measure whether uh, the, the records there were st still records or if the node was actually online. And what we could observe is that there is a very low number. So in the IPFS network, most of the nodes or if, yeah, the very high share of the nodes use uh, are based on Kubo, which means that they have the replacement policy that they're not going to keep uh, the offline peers in the routing table. And so that's why we have such a low um, ratio of unreachable peers in the, in the K bucket. And we can see there's a slight difference uh, between the low ID buckets, so 0 to 8, and the higher ID buckets, so uh, starting from 9. And I think that's because buckets 0 to 8 are always full, so they most of the time have 20 peers, whereas the other buckets don't have, um, uh, are not full most of the time, and so the, the replacement, the, the way they are replaced might be slightly different in the implementation. So those are very good results that we have only, so for the, the low ID bucket, out of the 20 peers that are in this bucket, only on average 0 0.75 is uh, not reachable. So that's uh, very good. <clears throat> now, uh, when we look at the peer distribution in the K bucket, so it's like, uh, how full is each bucket? So on the, on the x-axis, we have the bucket ID, and on the y-axis, we have the number of peers that are in this bucket. So as we can see, um, all buckets, so even up to nine, are full, or at least will have candidates. So the orange part, the missing peers per bucket, is in the case, um, I don't know, a peer has only 19 um, candidates, or 19 peers in its bucket number one, and there would be one other that exists in the network, um, but it is not included. So it is considered as a missing peer. And so we can see that the bucket zero to nine should always be full, but some of the time they're, they're not, but it's very, it's a really small part. So it's a 0 0.12 on average for the a full bucket. And then we have a bit more of missing peers in the, in the bucket, so nine to 13. 10, uh, 10 to 13. And yeah, I think that's just because uh, it's not necessarily included in the 20 closest peers, um, but they just didn't discover those neighbors. Then, so one other property of the, the Kademlia DHT is that each node should be aware of the 20 closest peers to its own ID. 
and that's just for routing purpose because you want to know your neighbors so that uh, when you try to route to someone, uh, their neighbor, their neighbors are, are going to know them. And what we found is that 61% uh, of the peers uh, know 20 out of the 20 neighbors, which is excellent. And that um, even, so we have less than 5% that don't, that know 17 or less um, of their 20 neighbors. So that is, uh, yeah, also very good. But now, so that was for the good part. Um, there is a thing that is a bit more concerning is uh, the diversity in the K-bucket. So um, what do I mean by diversity? Uh, it is the number of distinct individual per bucket. So uh, for instance, if uh, I take bucket zero and all of the network has uh, the, ex the exact same peers in the bucket zero, we don't have a high diversity. But if all of the peers are present in one another bucket zero, we will have a high diversity. So a high number of distinct peers, um, let's say per bucket globally. <clears throat> and so, yeah, in Kademlia, the live peers will uh, never get replaced and it's by design. And so, um, yeah, eventually the buckets that have a lot of candidates, so the zero and one, the unstable peer will go offline and get replaced, whereas the very stable peers will uh, still be online and so will never get replaced. And <clears throat> so it's a bit of a concern because uh, for content far away, you're gonna go through your bucket zero. And if it's only a small set of peers, you will, uh, so, it's bad for decentralization and you, they will also be overloaded because they will be in the very stable peer are, are going to be in every other peers bucket. And so, yeah, just going through a quick example. So we can see the colors better than yesterday. <laughs> um, so if we take, so uh, in kind of yeah bluish, we have the very stable nodes. In yellow, we have the nodes that are stable enough and we have unstable node in orange. And so that's kind of the state of bucket zero. So we have uh, four, uh, sorry, six different peers. And at the beginning, it's quite balanced. We have some peers that are very stable, some peers that are, that are unstable. And as we go over time, um, so the, the orange peers are gonna go offline because they are unstable and we expect them after two hours or 24 hours to just go offline. So they are gonna get replaced from, so they go offline and uh, their ent the, the entries pointing to them in the other's uh, bucket will also get replaced, all right? And then, then some new un their unstable nodes are gonna come up again. But then, so if we look, for instance, in bucket zero, we had two uh, yeah, unstable nodes. And while those nodes are gone, we're gonna try to replace them just with other nodes that are in the network. And so we're gonna pick, uh, eventually we're gonna converge to stability. And so eventually um, the stable enough nodes will, I don't know, go offline after a week or after a month. They're gonna get replaced and only the very stable nodes are gonna stay online. And eventually they need to, to fill up this bucket. So they will fill it with only very stable peers and so all of the very stable peers will be connected, strongly connected to each other. And as we expect those very stable peers to be, for instance, bootstrap peers or Hydra nodes, they are very important for the network. And so when new peers that could be stable enough or unstable join the network, they will uh, ask the bootstrap peers to help them fill the buckets. And so eventually we're gonna end up with um, very stable peers uh, in all of the nodes buckets with low ID. And yeah, so that's a bit concerning because of load balancing. And so I think, yeah, so we uh, measured it a bit. So it was a different measurement. So um, it was, so yeah, um, uh, let's say one column per week. So uh, yeah, 10 points of data, uh, one for each week. And uh, the, the measurements were uh, based on two crawls per day. So uh, yeah, basically each column 
is uh, the data from 14 crawls. And uh, we measure the diversity as the number of distinct individuals that appear um, in each K bucket. So if I'm in, for instance, bucket zero, it's going to be bucket zero of all of the peers. And I'm going to count the number of distinct peers that appear there. And so <coughs> while we measure, OK, so this graph has a lot of information. But just if we take uh, the blue column, so week zero, uh, we can see that the diversity, um, so the, the, yeah, the number of distinct peers, so the y-axis, the numbers are not very important because they could have been different with a different uh, scale. So if I measured over two weeks or over five weeks. But what is important is we can see that the diversity is going up from uh, bucket zero to bucket nine and then going back um, uh, to a, yeah, very low to bucket 21. And so between bucket nine and 21, the explanation is very simple. Uh, just there are not a lot of candidates that fit in this bucket. And so that's why um, uh, yeah, we don't have a lot of diversity it's because we don't have a lot of individuals. And uh, the rest is, um, so bucket zero and one, we have really a lot of candidates to choose from. So we're going to choose the most stable ones. And for instance, in bucket uh, eight, we're going to have way less uh, candidates in each bucket. So we're going to take just the one that are here. Even if they are not stable, we don't have better candidates. So we got to take them. And uh, so we're going to end up with a high diversity in bucket nine, even though we have less candidate than in bucket zero. So as we've seen before, uh, bucket nine is less full than uh, bucket zero on average. And uh, when we see so the measurement over time, we see that at week zero, we have um, yeah, such a diversity. And after uh, 10 weeks, nine weeks, um, the, the diversity uh, has fallen. And so when we go a bit deeper, so um, it is here. So now, uh, so we still have the, the week on the x axis. And so the bars are the number of distinct peer. Uh, so in three different buckets, so uh, 0, 1, and 9, which is the most diverse. And um, we have the moving average, which is the line uh, moving average over three, um, three weeks. And we can see that um, the diversity is decreasing over time. So in bucket zero and one with lower ID, uh, much. So yeah, we wouldn't expect the diversity to decrease in bucket nine. But uh, if we have less peers in the network or more peers are joining, I mean, we don't uh, really uh, manage our control how much peers there are in the network. So that's just observation. So we can take bucket, zero, uh, bucket nine as uh, the reference. But we can see that the diversity in bucket zero and one is falling much more quickly. And so we may end up eventually, I don't know, after a year or after five years or 10 years with having just, I don't know, 100 nodes in those bucket zero and one, and they will be the very stable peers. And so th that will be very bad. So. Uh, what, what I think uh, should be an easy fix would be just to change the replacement policy. Uh, th there, there are many things that, that, that can be changed, but just having, uh, let's say, a, a, a limited lifetime for each entry. And so you got to refresh each entry after some time would help for the diversity. Or, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'll keep the rest maybe for... For, for later, but including a geolocality component or just if you fill the, um, the key space of the bucket uh, uniformly, then uh, yeah, it's uh, other methods to, uh, that could improve the replacement policy. So yeah, to conclude, so we, uh, the DHT is, is doing very well overall. And um, uh, so yeah, the, we're missing only, uh, the K-Buckets are missing only a few number of peers. Uh, we don't have a lot of stale entries and the peer distribution is as expected. Um, the, the nodes know their 20 closest peers, uh, most of them. And uh, so, yeah, we observed the diversity decrease over time, but so it's not like an emergency for now. It's something that we can correct and 
uh, anyway it's not critical for now but yeah that's a path of uh, improvement and so all of the results are um, available on the network measurement repo where we have all of our RFMs and so yeah that's some references so I'll uh, also share the slide uh, with the clickable links so yeah How much impact do you think having Hydra's on the broken record? <laughs> <laughs> having Hydra's yeah. has on the health of bridging state. So again, are you able to hypothesize what, what the health of bridging state would be if you take Hydra's out? Um, I think it shouldn't change much. Or, <coughs> so, yeah, so we ex I'm not very familiar with the Hydra implementation. So how does it work for each head of the Hydra? So there's a peer ID. And what about the routing table? Is it shared for all heads? Or does each head have its own uh, routing table? Sure. Sure. OK, yeah, so I think the Hydra node will, would help the other nodes to uh, at least yeah, populate the routing table. So just, I mean, the, the routing table uh, are populated just by fetching content. And if the, the, the lookup is uh, simplified or goes very well, the routing table are going to go very well. Um, so one question I have is if we apply uh, the, some optimization uh, to increase the diversity yeah. of peers in the routing table, uh, what would be a good way to, obviously we can have a metric that would show the diversity, so that would change, <coughs> we would be able to see whether it's successful or not. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, how would we, we evaluate the performance of, you know, those nodes in the network? As in performances, in finding other peers, retrieving content and so on. Um, not sure I, I got the, the question. So. So we have we have the written table as it is today, mm -hmm. and we have the performance that we see when we want to do the HD lookup and find common and so on. We then apply the optimization that you're saying to increase the diversity. Mm -hmm. How what would be a like focused like targeted experiment to see if the performance is going to improve or not? I'd say just uh, monitoring continuously the lookup time. Okay, generally from the network. Yes, because it's all that matters. Or I mean, we can just uh, keep keep track of the diversity as a metric to see okay. if it would change. But otherwise, just in perf performance wise, I think the the just the the lookup request time is what we gotta observe to see the performance. Okay, is it? Yeah, with, uh, yeah, quick related one. Is there a way to do a more controlled experiment before releasing it out and having everyone update their routing tables? Yeah, that's ground, I think. That's ground, I think. But what is hard is to just model the churn. Yeah. yeah. How do you model it? How do you scale it? And it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so, what would be the kind of like goal you're looking for to move like for, for the health of the DHT is it like should you be more diverse should you be like more performant because like my understanding is like the stable peers and like everyone would like to look for stable peers which means it, it's likely to be performant and reliable but it's like heavily centralized so like you may like lose some performance on like peer which may be more unstable so so, so what what the goal I think it's a trade-off. So as we have 20 peers per bucket, so we could have, I don't know, 12 out of the 20 peers that would be very stable. So you know that there is some performance that is guaranteed. Um, and so the way you select very stable peers, so now is just if a peer goes offline, it's not going to be included anymore. And so maybe you just set a threshold. Okay, this peer is stable enough uh, for performance wise and set a, tr a threshold and have like, I don't know, like 16 uh, or 12 of those peers um, matching uh, 
this performance and the rest could be like random peers just to have more diversity so that the performance wouldn't be impacted so much and we have uh, yeah more decentralized so more load balancing and i think even so another um easy improvement or yeah i don't know but uh updating the the um, replacement policies uh if here um so <coughs> for bucket zero we can have basically any candidate uh, so in this node bucket zero so we may end up so <coughs> Yeah, there, there's not a lot of keys, but if we say um, we take three keys, then the three of them could belong to the bucket zero. And so this node, we know no one uh, in this part of the graph. And so what we could try also to have in a replacement policy is if there is a gap, then we could, so if the nodes learn about this one, but the table is already full and those nodes are still offline, so it's going to ignore this node. But what we can do is say, okay, here we know already a lot of them. We're going to evict this one because they are not uh, close enough. And take this one because it will help us to reach uh, this part of the tree. So, yeah, that could be one component. And another component could be just uh, latency. So, we want to have nodes with low latency in the routing table. So, combining um, latency, um, let's say, yeah, uh, distribution in the key space and uh, stability, I think we can reach maybe an optimal uh, replacement policy. Or, yeah, I mean, at least better than that. Yeah. Could you go to the graph where you show that the diversity decreases all the time? Yeah. Yeah, that's one. one. Um, could the, so, so you're, you're, um, just, you're showing the diversity in terms of distinct here at least per bucket? Could this decrease in diversity also be an effect of like a decreased network size? Um, in that time period? No, because that's the network size. Ah, oh, that is the network size? Yeah. All right, okay. Number of distinct connectors. I see. Okay, so, so it's, okay, I think I missed that. It's not exactly the same. Yeah, but it's totally Yeah. Okay, nice. And yeah, probably. So, as we can see, that um, even the bucket number nine is uh, yeah, losing a bit of diversity. So I think we can take it as a reference, but then bucket zero and one are decreasing much faster. If we take this image. And also, could you go to one of the earlier graphs where you showed the missing peers? Yeah, that one? Okay. Yeah. Did you consider for the missing peers also the ones, or did you exclude the ones that were unusual? Um, during the crawls? I mean, you could find a peer that would fit in the bucket, but it's not reachable in this crawl. Yeah, no, it's only reachable. Only yes. reachable, yeah, I could, okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. translate um, how we go about doing this? And yeah. Maybe just another question. Yeah. yeah. So, do you have anything else you want to? Um, measure with this data like regarding the HD health? Um, yeah, so we could just yeah benchmark the replacement policy. Or um, also, what we can do is compute the perfect routing table. So as we have a snapshot of the network, which we could just compute at each step the theoretical best routing table and compute the difference between what we have now and the perfect one. And then maybe model over time. So having the perfect routing table in practice at each step isn't optimized, I think, because it can require a lot of change, but just seeing, um, optimizing the distance between the actual routing table and the perfect one, uh, so that we minimize the number of change in the bucket that we have, um, could be yeah, a great performance metric to add to these results. <laughs>